Hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome to Hashtag Event Icons, where you get to chat with the icons of the events industry. My name is Alex Claxon. Uh, it has been a little bit since I've been on. Um, a lot has changed. Uh, little Bird Told Media, as most of you who are longtime watchers know, um, has actually merged with Nifty Method Marketing and Events, which is very exciting. That happened in February. Um, so I'm no longer with Little Bird Told Media, but it's very, very exciting. You can check out some of the stuff that we're doing over on niftymethod.com. Uh, but I'm very, very excited today because I'm talking to someone who I've admired for a long time um, about a topic that I think, especially right now, is really important, which is building brand loyalty for your events. It's Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, so you know what that means. It's time for another episode of Hashtag Event Icons, presented by Endless Events. The show where you get to ask the icons of the events industry anything. Just go to www.event-icons.com to ask questions. Our iconic guests will answer them live during the entire show. Before we get started, the more people we have watching, the better the conversation. So please help share hashtag event icons on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Just tell your friends to watch at www.event-icons.com. Now, without any further delay, this is Hashtag Event Icons. So, let's get to it. I'll introduce our guest today. Uh, you may have heard of him. His name is Johnny Cupcakes, uh, prankster, entrepreneur, keynote speaker. Uh, you may know him for his t-shirt shops that look like bakeries but with no food, uh, special edition t-shirts and frosting scented stores displayed in refrigerators packaged in to-go boxes it's a very cool experience i'm actually wearing uh my favorite johnny cupcake shirt right now um but let's have him join us hello hey, hey thanks for having me of course happy to uh get to chat with you today um i know that we're kind of in a very uh, crazy, uncertain time. Um, and I know there's so many questions around this topic. So it's exciting to have such an expert on the show who can really speak to um, what it takes to build that brand loyalty. Appreciate that. Um, so for those watching on social media, uh, join the conversation. If you have questions, if you have comments, uh, please let us know and uh, we'll make sure to uh, mention them throughout the show. Um, so this is your first time on the show, correct? Yes, sir. So we do have a question we ask every single new guest, and that is, how did you get involved in the events industry? How did you go from t-shirts with cupcakes to events? Well, I've been involved in the events industry on many different fronts. Uh, when I was a teenager, I was in a hardcore metal band, and we were uh, signed to a small record label. We toured around and played small sweaty venues where there were large mosh pits and um, I would sell my t-shirts out of my suitcase and uh, so that's one part of the events industry the other part is uh, through selling our t-shirts uh, we don't just sell merchandise we sell memories and the merchandise is the byproduct of everything we do at Johnny Cupcakes so um, we're basically event planners that sell um, merchandise and wacky wild ways uh, to give you an example around halloween we'll sell our halloween themed t-shirts and we'll release them at nighttime so you have to go out in the dark to buy a scary <laughs> t-shirt you can't buy it in the daytime we shut our doors until it's dark out um, we will make movie themes for movies that don't even exist like count spatula and rise of the two-headed zombie chef We'll make movie trailers to build a social presence and build up some hype and excitement. And when the doors open at nighttime, we'll have movies playing in the windows. We'll rent a popcorn machine. All the employees will dress up like zombies and we'll package the Halloween themed movie t-shirts in vintage VHS cases. So you awesome. get a collectible when you buy your t-shirt. In addition to that, I've gone as far as renting out a real hearse and a real coffin 
from a creepy guy on Craigslist for $220. And when the doors opened at nighttime, I personally got delivered inside of this <laughs> coffin and hearse. And That's while awesome. it was just $220, we made hundreds of thousands of dollars in free press because Channel 7 News had to come out and do a segment on the shop. So uh, in, in the past almost 20 years of being in business as a t-shirt brand, uh, we've spent little to no money on traditional marketing and traditional advertising, and it's mostly been through word of mouth. And when you put a fraction of what most people pay, just a fraction, sometimes nothing, into the details, the storytelling, the um, the, the packaging, the, uh, the environments, the events, the giveaways, all those little things come together and it gets people excited and, and it makes them brand ambassadors. Um, so uh, the other part of the event industry that I'm in is I, I do a lot of public speaking at different companies and I help people build brand loyalty, create memorable experiences and inspire innovation. Um, we do that through um, digital talks through virtually. And we also do the, I do those live um, at different events, whether it's at someone's headquarters or a, a big uh, industry event. Um, I got into that because other people were speaking about what my brand is and what I do. And I was excited at the time because I was getting free press. <laughs> and then right. I was like, these people are making money off of my story. Like there's some people out there that just make a living off of talking about what other people do. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and my brand was featured in a bunch of books as a case study on, on branding, brand loyalty, business, entrepreneurship. And while I'm excited and honored when that happens, as I matured a little bit and got some grays in my beard, I started to realize that I need to write my own book and tell my own story. So. Uh, each year I get invited out to do uh, about 400 events and I will, I can't do 400 events and I still have a company to run and, and I'm a dad now to two, uh, to two wonderful wild girls, but I, um, I only accept about 50 talks, uh, each year and it, whether it's a talk that is something that I'm in line with or based on the location or if it's, um, you know, or if it's something that I really, really believe in and, and, and want to work with. So uh, I love doing that. And what's great about those keynote speaking engagements that I do is I bring everything I talk about um, into the room. So we hide little prizes underneath all the seats. Um, everybody gets a, a little package at the end of my talk. I, I, there's a miniature Oprah Winfrey moment and everybody, you get a prize, you get a prize, you get a prize. And everybody reaches underneath their seat and the little prize helps hit home, home the, the importance of building unique experiences. And they get a little bag with a vintage trading card. It might be Ninja Turtles, New Kids on the Block, Ghostbusters. Uh, they get a, a Johnny Cupcakes pin, a Johnny Cupcakes sticker, a Johnny Cupcakes candy. And everyone has something slightly different. So it inspires people to network and trade with one another. And at about 95% of the talks that I do, the event organizers, the event planners, the meeting planners, um, they'll work with myself and my team ahead of time. And we will design a special edition t-shirt that we surprise people after the baby surprise. Then we do the big surprise and we say, you get a t-shirt, you get a t-shirt, you get a t-shirt. Uh, so it's uh, the, the look on people's face is priceless. And what I love is I love speaking speaking to people in the event industry because they obsess over these little details like I do. Um, so it's very therapeutic. But I also like speaking for the, I don't know, the, the people who doubt everything and it's really hard to change their ways. I love that challenge of going in there. And um, when you see that switch go off in someone's head, it's, um, it's, it's a beautiful moment. Um, so uh, I'll stick around, I'll autograph t-shirts, or sometimes we'll do golden tickets. Um, sometimes we'll make special edition shirts that are slightly different from the ones everyone else gets. Mm. And the special edition ones will go to the uh, the attendees who signed up first, the VIPs, the sponsors. So 
I love the event industry. I've been on like so many different sides of it and there's definitely a lot of room for improvement, but um, it's, it's great. It, it's something different every day and it's a puzzle. It's a, it's a, an experience that you get to create for other people. And some of these people, they, this, this trip to New Orleans or New York or Boston or Chicago, this trip to go to um, a, a big industry event might be something that they only do once a year. And right. that's their chance to meet new friends or to come back or to network and, and put together one of the biggest collaborations. So it's a, it's a cool thing. Yeah, I think sometimes uh, we often forget, especially those of us who do attend so many different events, because I'm a speaker as well. So I'm speaking at, you know, 30, 40 events a year. And I think we sometimes forget that our audience, this may be their only event that they're coming to, right? That this is this is their only opportunity yeah. um, yep. to get that experience. Um, so I think experience design is important. And I think that brand loyalty and those memories for sure tie into that as well. Um, I, I want to ask you what you think and on, on the bakery, I'll, I'll use the word ingredient, what the most important ingredient is when it comes to building brand loyalty. Uh, it's transparency, sharing your story. You know, a lot of times, um, companies hide behind this uh, kind of blank corporate image. And it's the childhood photos with the bad haircuts that make someone feel a human connection with you. It's the, the, the history, the stories, sharing what your first concert is. You can still offer a very serious service, but uh, you have to be human and sometimes that's difficult to do. And sometimes it's difficult to convince the powers that be that you need more of that. But uh, I think good design and good humor can go a long way. Uh, to give you an example, when I was sourcing refrigerators to put in my t-shirt shops to display t-shirts in, virtually every website I went to was selling the same products. They're all distributors offering the same thing. And I, I only found, I, I could have kept searching, but during my uh, few hours of searching, I found one company that told me they were a family run brand, um, shared some photos of their history in that little, that, that made a very small spark that was enough to ignite me to spend m my money on what they offer rather than all of the other people selling the same things. Um, I forget, but I might have even spent a teeny bit more, not a lot, but maybe like an extra 100 or 200 bucks. But I felt like this was going to the right place. It, it wasn't, um, you know, and everyone's using the same colors, the, the blues and the grays. And um, I don't know, it, it's those things that, that stand out. And even on social media, like, yeah, I'm, I'm selling t-shirts, but Every few posts, I give a little glimpse into my personal life or, or I feature a customer or, um, or I try to have these live chats with, with people. You don't have to use social media to only sell things. You can share the good times, the bad times. Um, and having that dialogue with your customers, it allows you to make smarter decisions and collect data and, and just be transparent. So I would say transparency, storytelling, and those little fun details are, are the key things. Even a handwritten note. I mean, I, I collect vintage typewriters. Um, you know, I, I'm looking left to right. I, I see them. I, I, um, I, I have to move them because my wife does not like that I have over 20 typewriters in the house. But uh, I just fell in love with the art of shutting off my phone and computer, bringing my typewriter to a park and typing a letter to somebody. There's no backspace. So you use your words with a lot more color. Um, there's an instant printer. You don't need Wi-Fi. And when someone gets a follow-up letter in such a unique way, it stands out from all the other noise that they're getting through emails and, and through generic cards in the mail. I'll even like around Halloween, I love Halloween, I'll type notes on the back of vintage 
educational skeleton charts <laughs> and I'll fold them up <laughs> and I'll put them in black envelopes with a black Johnny Cupcakes wax seal. And I'll put vintage stamps on them because they still work as long as they're not used. So I'll put a, a give blood stamp next to a Dracula stamp or I'll put a Alfred Hitchcock stamp next to a bunch of bird stamps. And when someone gets that in the mail, even if they're going to throw it away, they will, they'll never forget that. Um, yeah. They won't. And when everyone's sending out cards around the holidays, which is nice too, you know, I like to flip the script and send out stuff around Halloween <laughs> and Easter and, and, you know, baseball season. So just have fun, have, have fun. People are attracted to fun and, and don't come up with just a few things. Don't do what you did last year. Try not to do what everyone else is doing. Uh, I know a lot of that is common sense, but that there are times where we start to stick to what we know and we do that year after year. And I, I forget the exact quote, but Albert Einstein uh, once said the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting new results. So I think this time right now with all of us not unsure of what's going to happen with the event industry and with the world, um, I, th I think as tough as it is, there is a silver lining. And I mean, I'm talking to you in my bed bedroom <laughs> right behind me. Kids are running around downstairs. There's some human element to it. I'm not in an office. And it, in that little slice of realness um, just feels good. It's just very refreshing. And, and we have to in it. We have to come up with what are we going to do if things don't get better quick? And you know what? We should have challenged ourselves that every year, every month, every day. And for some of us, we haven't innovated enough. And this is the, the, um, this is the push that we need to try new things. And we might have to make difficult decisions and we might have to, we might have to lay off a person or two and, and that sucks and nobody wants to do that. Um, but maybe when things get better, we, we could bring them back on. Um, but we use this time to, to, to really refresh our brands, our personal brands, our logos, our social presence, the videos on our website, um, and, and just, just plan, just use it to plan ahead. I think that's interesting because right now I think people are struggling with the transparency. Part, especially those who've had to cancel or postpone their events. Um, I, I think that they don't want to share every little bit of information regarding the behind the scenes of how they make that decision. But the ones who are doing that, I think I'm seeing so much more empathy from their attendees than the ones who aren't. And the ones who aren't, I'm seeing a lot of anger, a lot of um, upset attendees, and, and really that kind of loss of that brand loyalty. And I think we do often forget um, that there's the human element, right? Like when you get an email from an event saying it's canceled or postponed, it's coming from a person. Someone had to write that. It didn't yeah. just magically appear. It's, it's not from this mystery company like, you know, Overlord. It's, it's coming from a person. Um, and I'm seeing a lot of, I mean, every single person is getting emails left and right right now with, you know, here's what our company is doing about COVID-19. And I'm seeing very few that are signed by a person. Yeah. And it's like, I, I want to know who wrote this. I want to know who that person is. I want to know if I'm able to reach out to that person. Um, you're seeing these connections uh, with celebrities and people who have these personal brands um, where they are in their bedrooms in places that normally they would never have broadcast from. <laughs> and you're seeing this kind of vulnerability and, um, this, oh, they're, they're real people, right? Um, I think uh, the other day, uh, Rosie O'Donnell did something for the Actors Fund. And she had all these uh, actors, Broadway actors, live streaming for about three hours. And they would hop in for, you know, five, ten minutes each. And Patti Lapone came on and she was broadcasting from her basement. And for the next two days on Twitter, she has been like giving tours of her basement. People had tons of questions about her basement. And it's like, who would have thought three weeks ago that we'd be like, oh, let's get a tour of Patty Lapone's basement. 
<laughs> that's I like that. It, it's <laughs> you don't know what's going to happen. You just roll with the dice. But yeah, you're right. That transparency and I mean, years ago, uh, I don't know if it's still around. There was a website called Tiny Chat. It was like it was kind of like Zoom, but not so good at the time because it was so new but i would go on at night and and i would um i'd brush my teeth with my customers from around the world and we'd all brush our teeth together and you'd see people from all different places with their different johnny cupcake shirt on i wasn't selling anything i I, and i think you can just reconnect with your your customers your clients and retell your story in, in different ways and and if you want to share the bad stuff, the good stuff, you know, even better. But um, remind them how you started and, and, and who's on your team and, um, and and what your favorite moments were and your worst moments, moments were and, and what you have planned coming up um, and, and build that anticipation. But it's weird. It's, it's a really it's weird It's a different time. I think a lot of people were unprepared. Yeah. Um, you know, there's been a lot of discussion. I was going to ask this later, but since you kind of brought it up, yeah, yeah. there was a lot of discussion regarding whether or not you should market your upcoming events, like your events in the fall that, you know, you normally would have been opening registration for right now. Um, mm. Is it okay to market those events and say, sign up and register today? And I think mm. um, it's it's a real struggle for a lot of events right now. It's especially those ones that are too far off to make the decision whether or not to cancel or postpone. Um, yeah, that is, um, that's so tricky. You, you might, you take the chance of making people think you don't care about their safety yep. and you really don't know what's going to happen. You know, this person says things will be safe by Easter, which seems virtually impossible. <laughs> Some people say, not until the fall, the end of summer. Um, I, I would personally, I'd be nervous to promote something, and it sucks because you're you might be working with the venues, the hotels, you might have pre-sold all these tickets. Um, you can do it again. You can make your mess your message. This is just another chapter in your story, and it might be a bad, embarrassing chapter, but um, safety is number one, and. Yeah, it's tough. My, I had to shut the doors to my store. You know, we pay about ten thousand dollars a month for rent, and I had to lay off not all, but most of my store employees. And it 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 sucks. It hurts. Um, I had to lay off someone in my warehouse that that um that's been with me for twelve years. I cried. I struggled with it. I. I'd almost rather be laid off than laying someone else off. But if I'm laid off, then everybody's laid off. So right. I need to figure out a way to still stay afloat. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a tough couple of weeks being at home, sitting at dinner with my family, everyone's talking and I, I'm looking right through them because all I could think about is where, where else are my other employees going to find jobs and, and what, what can I do to help? And there's not so much information out there and it keeps changing and it, it's hard to, um, it's hard to put on a smile and, and, and keep going. But, um, we've been having, uh, virtual chats with everyone at, at my brand and people we collaborate with, and it's been great. Um, we've been, um, we've been brainstorming things and being more productive there than I've ever seen anywhere else. And, um, I have so many papers of different ideas and, and we're, you know, um, I, I like to think we're moving in, in the right direction and we needed this. This was a much needed pause to breathe, reassess everything, change some features on our website. Like my social media icons were always at the bottom of my website. And it's been just a, a sticky note on, on my computer of things that I need to do. And it's been rotting on my computer for <laughs> um, years. And yeah. you know what? Earlier today, we got those icons moved to the top and we're starting to see more followers coming, uh, joining on a little bit quicker. So it, it's a good it's like an extended rainy day. It's an extended school vacation. And 
some of us have to be our own daycare. Like we had just put our girls in daycare. Well, we adopted our daughters from South Korea and they, thank goodness, we were able to bring them home on Christmas, which was a couple months before all of this stuff went down. Yeah. And I feel, I feel for anybody that's, you know, adopting internationally right now, because that's really making the process very difficult. Um, but we finally put them in daycare after having them home a little bit and, and it had been going great. And then all this happened. So and the, uh, they're back up. They're here. We have a unique <laughs> situation. My, my wife and I bought a home with my wife's twin sister and her husband and their little boy, and we're raising our kids together. So it's, it's nice right now. Well, it's loud right now. Uh, I don't know if you can hear it. We can hear her. There it is. Oh, you know what? I might be able to change something on my microphone. It's very faint. Okay. Okay. Well, anyhow. Maybe, um, maybe we'll have nice one right of those uh, those moments where the news reporter yeah, guy yeah, from his home or the kid. Yeah. It's nice right now because... There's four people, four adults on a mortgage. Yeah. And if any of us have a hiccup or a terrible time, we're all here to pick each other up. So that's a story for another day is, is this uh, uh, community living situation, which we've been doing for five years now. And it's, and it's, um, and it's great. But anyways, yeah. Um, so everyone will be fine. We just yeah. got to innovate. We have to innovate. So I think it's it's interesting because we also had to lay off um, some of our staff as well this week, and um, it's tough and it's funny because I feel like you know it was we were getting really ramped up and excited. I had just merged my business in February um, after four years on my own, so I was like, I have a team and I'm so excited, and now the team is gone, <laughs> and uh, you know we're we're I'm working harder than I've ever done before because we have so many things we're trying to work on and um you know as a crisis communications expert in the industry that's been my every single day right now um it's been kind of nuts but I can imagine <laughs> you know um in this age of uncertainty that we're experiencing um how important would you say that brand loyalty is for events um, do you oh, think yeah. that an event that doesn't have it can be successful if they have to cancel or postpone? Yes, I, I, I do think, I think it'll be a little bit more difficult than if you had been sharing, transparently sharing your story for years and having a, a personal brand and, and professional brand online. Um, you know, if you had those things that would be more helpful, if you had a physical mailing list, like I'm, I'm big into the, the tangible items, the, you know, little booklets and newspapers. And, and I think, I don't think print is dead. I think with you, if you have good, uh, good design, good storytelling, good humor, good, I, I hate to use the word content, but good content, um, it can be very valuable to keep up that connection with your customers. So if you don't have it, I still think you can still get it. It'll take a little bit of time, but now's the time to watch some Ted talks on, on YouTube and to tune into different webcasts and webinars um, to pick up some books and to just build, build up your skill sets, whether you stay in this industry or not, or work for yourself or someone else, whatever the future might hold, um, now is the time to to build your um, your your skill sets. But we've you know this brand loyalty. Um, I just have to share with you. I've met thousands of customers that have Johnny Cupcakes logos tattooed on them. It was definitely scary at first, but after learning people's stories, some people have met their best friends through the brand. Some people have met their significant others through the brand. Got married. Um, I sometimes I joke around and say I should start a company called T Harmony, um, <laughs> the art of meeting people through T-shirts. But uh, these are just some of the tattoos. Uh, you know, I've seen body tattoos, neck tattoos. Uh, I've seen tattoos in places I wish I, I didn't see. <laughs> and when we have events, um, you know, people people camp out. Uh, um, some people have camped out up to two weeks sleeping on the streets to get limited edition t-shirts. Wow. Um, 
So this was on Carnaby Street in London. We had an extended uh, pop-up shop. We were there for a few years. Um, we do pop-up shops all over the place. I have an amazing team of cake dealers, um, which we teach event planning to, and they do pop-up shops in different cities around the U.S. Um, so yeah, we're, we're learning new things. I, I don't have it all figured out, and that's okay. Um, I, I know I learn from failures. I learn from trying. Some stuff is successful, but I, I think my superpower is I just don't care about messing up. So I keep trying new things and eventually something sticks and that, but the failures become even more valuable because that's what people want to hear. So they can avoid that stuff or learn how you worked your way and, and um, just kind of mucked your way through it, you know? So I imagine trust is kind of essential to brand loyalty, right? Yeah. Um, especially right now in the climate that we're in, what can an event do to demonstrate that they're trustworthy? Again, transparency. Like, show your messy office. Show your empty office. Show your desk make a video of uh, how you had to lay someone off. Maybe you can help that person get a job by using social media to, to get someone interested in the person you had to let go. Um, you know, depending on the timing, it could come off as a slap in the face. So it all depends on the person and, and the situation. Um, today, I got a call from um, one of the banks that we work with and they just wanted to check in on me and let me know what potential things could be rolling out in the future. Um, and it was just nice to not get an email, but to get a, to get a phone call. Um, I'd use this time to call people to, to have, um, to, to have video chats with people, Skype with people, write some handwritten notes. Um, a few years back, I took a couple weeks off from work to work. And what I did is I exported all of the top spending customers for my web store and the customers who've been with us the longest. And I spent two weeks writing them handwritten notes. I used Batman postage stamps. I, I made it and I didn't just say, hey, thank you for the support. I said, oh, my God, you're from Long Island, New York. That's where my wife's from. People say coffee really funny. And <laughs> did you know that's where Tony Danza and Busta Rhymes are from? And and um, Rakim, the best rapper of all time, is from Long Island. And, and if you take the train at night, you might slip on puke because people really love to party. But they're super loyal people. They have the best delis in the world, best bakeries in the world. Anyhow, thank you for the support. My family and I appreciate it much love Johnny cupcakes. And we have some customers that love our brand. They collect, they own hundreds of shirts. Some people own over a thousand t-shirts and they, some of them don't want other people to know about us because they want to keep that thing special. It's kind of like when your favorite band gets bigger and plays bigger venues. But I had this one outspoken customer post the letter that I mailed him. And he said, I don't care if Johnny Cupcakes sells out to certain large department stores. I'm going to be a fan for life. Um, thank you so much, Johnny. So, um, you know, it, you might only be able to touch 10, 12, 50, 100 people a day, but <clears throat> start from your most loyal clients and customers and work your way down the list. And, um, and, and if you <clears throat> want to make it even more special, one year, I <clears throat> I have a list on my phone of a uh, surprise. It's like a surprise list for people in my life. And I'll always make little secret notes. And um, one year during the summer, I, in conversation, I found out what all of my employees' favorite Christmas memories were from their childhood. <clears throat> and when the holiday season came around, I spent sleepless nights on eBay, finding the original toys and the original packaging. 
It's amazing. And when I gave it to them, when I gave it to them, some of them cried. And it wasn't so much getting the toy, but they knew that I was listening and that I took my time to find this, but they knew that I was listening and that was the big thing. So it doesn't have to be a chunky financial bonus or um, a blank statement on your website. It could be, hey, I remember that um, Bill from Chicago loves Led Zeppelin. I'm going to send him a Led Zeppelin poster or cassette tape or vinyl record uh, with a sorry note. You know, um, if you can in your database, make notes of if they have a dog, how old their kids are. Sounds creepy, but, you know, if someone's <laughs> turned sweet 16, send a sweet six. Man, maybe don't do that. Um, <laughs> And if you can't come up with anything, you can always utilize pop culture. Like if it's baseball season, I know there's no sports right now, but baseball season, you can send out some vintage baseball cards. Um, if it's uh, if it's St. Patrick's Day, you can, you know, one thing I did is I dressed up as a leprechaun and I hid around the city. I was hiding in the bushes of people's yards and back bay, um, their tiny front yards. And I would post on social media where I was. And if you find me, you get a pot of gold t-shirt design and people chase me around. So um, I, I could, I'm losing my voice from being so passionate about it, but there's so, <laughs> and I just sell t-shirts. Yeah. I, well, not, and it's not just a t-shirt, it's a memory and, and we sell memories. The merchandise again is the byproduct. So if I can reinvent something as simple as a graphic t-shirt, with the help of my amazing team and the people we collaborate with and, and some of our customers suggestions, but if we can recreate and reinvent the, something as simple as a t-shirt for the past 20 years, um, there's no reason whatsoever why you can't reinvent what you do, no matter what it is, um, that there's always, always room for improvement. Um, and I, I think that's why I love the retail industry and the events industry so much because it changes. And what's nice about that, it's like somebody kicking over your sandcastle at the beach, as sad as it is. Now you have to make a new sandcastle. And if you like making sandcastles, you're in for a great time because <laughs> some jerk running around kicking them over. So I don't um, think there's anyone in the events industry who plans events and doesn't love planning events. I don't think you do it if you don't love it. I, I Correct. And if you do, you do it for a month or two and you quit. And <laughs> and you're... Bye. Yeah. It, it uh... takes a certain type of, um, a certain type of personality. Yeah. So I think that personalization and that listening and stuff was important. Um, especially in relation to my next question, which is, you know, for some of these uh, events, especially ones that were the first ones who had to cancel or postpone their events, and it was very spur of the moment, you know, there's mm -hmm. some events out there that had to cancel when people were already in planes on the way there. Mm -hmm. um, for events like that, who feel that the loyalty may have been lost in the process, um, what can they do to kind of gain it back? Can they gain it back? Yeah, yeah. I we're all itching to leave our houses. We're a little nervous, but we we want to leave and we want things to get back to normal. And it might not be tomorrow. And I hate to say it, but there is a very slight chance it might not even be this year. Mm -hmm. um, there could be nervous attendees that have families that don't want to get anyone. No one wants to get anyone sick, especially something as fatal as this and as uncertain as this. So when they do roll out a vaccine and i mean if i knew a vaccine was coming out tomorrow um but i had an event that i planned or that i wanted to go to or a vacation that i wanted to take my family to and it was six months from now personally i would still feel nervous because i don't know i want to wait to see if this vaccine works on X amount of people and to see if this spreads in a different way. Right. And I, I, I'm, I'm scared. I, I don't, I don't. I think so. that's key, right? Is that people are scared. Um, and I yeah. think when the yeah, dust settles, I think in 
a few weeks even, um, you're going to see people who are kind of frozen right now and in this stage of kind of unknowing and fear, um, mm. people are going to get their sea legs, right? They're going to figure out, okay, this is the new normal. This is what's going on right now. Even if this does continue on and, and is prolonged, they're going to figure it out. They're going to find their balance. Um, and I think one of the things that was is really important about the stuff that you said is um, kind of the role of those fans, right? Those, those people who love your brand, um, who have connected memories to these brands. Um, so for them, what is their role? What is the role of a brand ambassador or a brand evangelist um, in the events industry? Is, I mean, their role is if, if you played your cards right, their role is to support you and wait. And if you want to ask for help from them, you can say, hey, we can't sell tickets right now. Um, but one thing you can do is we'd love to, we love you to film a video of yourself. It doesn't matter how, um, how it looks, just film a video, 30 seconds of your favorite memory from last year's event. You can still collect data and content from anyone you've ever worked with and use that. You can make a new video reel for your website. You can make a, a, a new announcement. You could have a hundred of your top um, uh, people that go out to your meetings, your events um, say, hey, I can't wait for 2021. You know, I can't wait. I just signed up on the email list. You can have a call to action that's almost subliminal in these videos that uh, other people are saying, and you could give them some talking points. So if I heard someone say, I can't wait for the event to, to announce again, and, and the, I, I'm going to sign up for the email list as a viewer of that video, that makes me be like, oh, I should sign up for that email list, or um, I should m make a, a, an alert on my calendar. Um, so I think their role, if you played your cards right, is to keep supporting you and, and you have to be okay with asking for help. Um, so, I mean, that's one big thing I could think of personally, I've had to, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. I have scrap paper all around me, um, you know, and my team is doing everything they can to, to come up with great ideas, to engage with our, our customers and to talk to our vendors. Um, so one big thing, um, that we're doing is, you know, I, as a speaker, I, I had, quite a few, ev a few events get canceled or postponed. Um, but some of them are turning into virtual events. And for mm -hmm. me, I don't feel disappointed. I'm like, this is great. I get to be at home or in my right. own city. I don't have to take the risk of going on an airplane. Um, you know, so as unprofessional as you might think a webinar could be or a web conference or a web meeting um it's what's going to make everyone feel the safest and the best and it's what's most convenient for everybody right now yeah. and you could still get a turnout and if you can't sell enough tickets you could get some sponsors and just say hey at the beginning you know this was sponsored by mason jar incorporated you know use them for your next big event um or your wedding um Here's their website. You know, you could plug in a few people, make, you know, maybe not as much, but you could still make some good money. Um, another thing that we're doing with event planners and even uh, people who have not booked me to speak um, and even people who aren't even having events, we're offering, um, you know, we'll collaborate with them to make a special edition T-shirt and at no additional cost, um, Fulfillment wise, um, my team will um, carefully, like my sister, when I say my team, my sister who lives three minutes from our warehouse will go in and print out labels and send individual care packages of t shirts um, to all of your employees or clients who are working from home. And you can include a, a custom positive message that we put inside those packages. So, um, just trying to be innovative. Our stores closed. Other people want to boost morale with um, their employees or their clients working from home. Um, so we're just trying to get scrappy and innovative and and see uh, you know see what we can do. 
Yeah, I totally see how that can work, especially with virtual events. Um, think about like for the speakers, for example, right? So yeah. Global Meetings Industry Day is coming up in April. And yeah, normally we'd all be meeting face to face and um <laughs> but there's um you know meeting professionals international is hosting a 12 hour long broadcast um which i'm going to be speaking on um for about 45 minutes uh doing my crisis communication stuff and then there's another group that i've seen come about that um my company nifty method is helping uh also market um just a general association agnostic um broadcast and they're trying to actually break a record for the longest or the the most live stream attendees i believe is the guinness record they're trying to break um and i'd love to see something like with the t-shirt idea is like send if you know who the speakers are who are going to be on camera like send them all the same t-shirt to wear so there's yeah. kind of like i think that that's kind of like a cool idea um, yeah. That you can the speakers, the attendees, the meeting planners, even if there's a note that's like, you know, instead of do not open until Christmas or your birthday, it could say do not open until we tell you to dur during the the broadcast and right. you get to see this package be opened. Um, so I think that that's cool. And you know what? And I think if they break that record or, or have just a really good turnout, um, I think it's going to make more people feel comfortable about having um changing up how they have their events in the meantime um, yeah. again, it's going to be different it's not going to be the same but there will be um a, a great sense of human uh, human element and and uh, human to human element and a great sense of transparency and um and realness you're just everyone's at home there's a dog in the background there's a baby crying hopefully everyone knows <laughs> to put their their video on mute until it's their turn to speak, but yeah, um, but it's it, it'll be okay. It'll and be not fine. go to the bathroom like yes. uh, that yes. one. <laughs> one mute did. yourself. Yeah. <laughs> um, it'll be fine, and and it'll yeah. be it'll be even better when things do come back to play. And given, you know, some companies will be smaller, some companies will have merged, some companies will have gone out of business, or some. Some event planners will choose to be independent um, so that they don't have as much overhead. Um, but however the dice is rolled, um, this is the time to come up with our big ideas and to stop giving away the same old gifts and, and the cheesy this and that, but to, to have improvements and processes and, and, um, and to just, just get better and and there will have might have to be some tough decisions. Um, yeah. You know, um, but I, I think the, uh, the brand ambassador, the fan stuff, um, you know, that you were talking about and the, with those, something that reminded me of something I used to actually recommend to people um, was using your social media platforms in your favor. Right. Uh, you talked about sharing videos of, you know, your favorite memories from past events mm -hmm. um, on Facebook. The first thing it does every morning is remind you of memories yeah. from the previous year. And if you do this now, um, especially if your event was going to say, you know, be in April, May or mm -hmm. June, if your registration is going to be opening now, um, don't open registration for the event if it's being canceled or postponed. But ask your attendees, like share your favorite photo from a previous event. Um, you know, get on video, share your favorite memory, because what's going to then happen is next year, the same time, Facebook is going to remind them of that and do the marketing for you. Right. So, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, that's true. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. You know, so kind of use the platforms to your, your favor. Um, there let are, them do the work. Yep. Yeah, there's plenty of clever ways to do it. Um, it's just not being afraid to do something different because you we're, we're being forced to and it'll it'll be fine pressure builds diamonds it also crushes things and <laughs> and uh <laughs> makes things go bankrupt too um but you gotta you gotta have some sense of humor and and um you just gotta yeah that, lace up your boots and 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 get get the work done and you know i i I've been forced to make some tough decisions, but I'm also realizing that, you know what, maybe I don't need to pay for my own warehouse 
and staff to run that warehouse. And as much as I'm a things person and I collect things and I, you know, I, I, and I love people and I want to have this like really big team. Um, do I really need to personally ship out the items? Like maybe, maybe someone else, maybe other place can ship it out and I don't have to pay for a building and heat and electricity and desks. Um, maybe most of my staff can work from home and, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe the hours will be different, but, um, I don't know. I, and I'm trying it all out. I'm trying everything <laughs> I can. I, I yeah. you know, I'm a professional in some ways and of brand loyalty and building cool experiences and, 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 and um, and innovation, but, uh, you know, I, I'm just a human trying to figure things out and, and that's okay. And, and it'll be okay. Yeah. My company is always remote. So I've been working home for the last five years. And so for me, I'm like, Oh, this is just normal. Except now I can't go out at night. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, you know. what to do. But you um, know, this is where you're going to shine because you're so used to this. So, everyone you work with, um, you know, they might come to you for, for some advice or look up to you to see how you're um, managing um, your time and, and, and the way that you take care of things. So from a perspective of what can event planners do right now, especially if their events are being canceled or postponed, what can they be doing in the meantime to still show value, still, um, you know, kind of stay top of mind a bit for their um, attendees and their stakeholders? Yeah. yeah. I would say uh, video testimonials. I would say new highlight reel. I'd say behind the scenes footage, complete transparency, sharing the mess, making your mess your message. Um, I would say uh, collecting testimonials on LinkedIn. Anyone you've ever worked with, go down. Uh, some of them might not write it to you, or they might write you in a month or two or, or never, but. Um, everyone's home right now and i've seen not too many people take advantage of that um, when someone's going to work with you to plan their event plan their meeting they want to go read what other people have to say about you and if it's outdated or if you only have a few people who have left, left you testimonials or linkedin recommendations rather um they could choose someone else over you. So um, build that up, take that time, make that database, ask for help, ask for recommendations, um, revamp your website, ask complete strangers what they think about your website, um, you know, and, and, and start posting more on social media and, and sharing those things, those, those uh, stories and, and reshare stories about how you started. And, um, you know, I, I think that's going to be a great way to build loyalty, to build um, engagement until um, you can definitively say when your next event will be. Right. Yep. And, and, and plan some webinars and try selling some tickets and try selling some VIP tickets. How are you going to do that virtually? Well, maybe they get to come in a half hour early and ask questions with the speaker, um, you know, Make it a challenge to get sponsors for a webinar. Um, if you can crack that that code, you have a whole other thing that you can offer people. And and I think forever um, there's going to be a lot of companies that want to have more events um, virtually. Yeah, I, I, that's the first I've heard of that VIP idea. I like that a lot. Which uh, idea? The VIP, the, the come VIP, in and yeah. 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 Yep. See how you can do it. There's ways, there's ways to do it. Um, maybe those are the people that get the special edition t Johnny cupcakes t-shirt, you know? Um, but there's, there are ways, there's ways to do it. You just got to try and they're not all going to work out. You know, I, Oh, I can't count how many times that I have failed. Um, but my, my $50,000 mistakes, or my $100,000 mistakes inspire my $2 million ideas. And um, you just think positive and, and look at look at those things and, and what, what did it force you to think of and do? And it might not be today or tomorrow, but 
you're going to come up with with a plan. But ask for help, collaborate, hop on video chat, um, FaceTime, Skype, hop on Zoom, um, and just go watch some other videos, read what other people are doing, pick up some books, um, get better at writing, get better at Excel spreadsheets, whatever you wish you could be better at, now is your time to do that. And I know I very much understand that you might be running a daycare at home too, but um, carve out a half hour, an hour, wake up an hour early um, and, and just make a list, a very small attainable list of the things that you want to do to be a better you. And if you work for a bigger company, maybe you ask them for some financial help to sign up for some of these classes. But right now there's a lot of classes out there that are for free as well uh, um, that you can choose from. So Especially over like the next 30 days, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of free trials. Um, yep. 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 So we're winding down. We always ask the same kind of two questions at the end. Uh, the first is if you could pick only one, what is your one tip you have for event planners? And it does not have to be brand loyalty related. It can be any tip. Hmm. Uh, I would say switch up. Switch. I mean, off the top of my head from attending events, um, switch up the gifts that you give people. I, I love water bottles. I love flash drives, but I don't need any more of those. I don't, I don't need any more of those. Uh, I moved. Fact, yeah, I think I threw out 20 water bottles. It's a way, I mean, and you're giving up water bottles to recycle and to, to help the planet. But by giving up the same thing every year, things are getting trashed. Um, yeah. In fact, that that's been one of the things. Uh, being a, a speaker and being a, someone who attends events, uh, getting annoyed by that has motivated me to innovate and, and act as a creative agency for uh, event planners to help them and their clients come up with special edition designs and handle the production and all that good stuff. So, I'm happy. People are doing the not so good, predictable things because it inspires other people to think differently. But you should change it up. Um, you know, I would think about. Yeah, I could go on and on, but if it's if it's one thing, <laughs> I, I would say um, the details. Yeah, the little tiny details, handwritten notes to the giveaways, and how you're going to make the VIP people feel more special to sign up early. That early registration helps us decide what room to book, how many rooms to block book. Um, it helps us decide a lot of things for the event. So um, whether it's VIP or just pre-registration, um, how you can do that. Um, but yeah, I, I, I have I have confidence. I do. I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> that yeah. once the dust settles and people yeah. kind of figure stuff out, it, yeah. it's going to come back. Um, yeah. So yeah. the last question we always ask is, do you have any new cool resources you want to share, whether it's websites, blogs, books, gadgets, where do you get your ideas from? Uh, uh, I mean, collaborating with people is the best way to come up with ideas. So not a specific place, but just, I mean, utilizing, I've been loving Zoom lately and just utilizing um, more video chats. Um, as far as, yeah, the resources, I'm just trying to, try to it's tough. I, I want to utilize my social media and, and push people to, you know, do more web sales right now and order more Johnny Cupcake shirts because we are still shipping them. Um but, and my shop is closed until whenever we're allowed to open back up. Um, but at the same time, I'm also trying to replace my phone time, my screen time with reading books and writing. So, um, yeah, I would, I would suggest everybody pick up a typewriter or a notebook and write down your ideas as cheesy as it might sound to some people, write down your feelings that you're going out, that you're, you're going through right now, because this is a, a historic moment right now and people are going to want to want to know what you were going through and what you did and you can look back at those notes and say man i should have done this or i'm glad i did this 
Um, so yeah, documenting your journey. And again, that can be content when you do decide to pick up your phone. Um, utilize LinkedIn, obviously, but not just to add people as friends, use it to collect testimonials. And also now is your time during your downtime to ask people how you can help them. If someone pulled a really big favor for you in the past, um, hit them up and ask them what you can do to help say, Hey, I'm good at, uh, I'm good at writing. I'm good at creating videos and, um, and I'm good at cooking. What, what, what can I do for you? Um, this week, I'm thankful that you uh, volunteered at my event a couple of years ago. Um, thank those people. And like I said before, extract those top customers, top clients, in the top spending clients and customers and the ones you want to win over and find out your unique approach to reach out to them in a personal, uh, transparent, fun, fun, fun way. That's great. Well, we really appreciate you being on the show today. Um, oh, and, for, and sorry to interrupt. Yes, yes, yes. Um, for the people who think I sell actual cupcakes, <laughs> or if you tuned in later on in the conversation, um, we do not sell real food. Johnny Cupcakes is is a t-shirt brand, as Alex said earlier. Um, we display culinary-themed t-shirts inside of refrigerators. And when you go to my store, you walk through a giant oven door that secretly opens. My store smells like frosting. When you buy a Johnny Cupcakes t-shirt, we package them in pastry boxes. Uh, and to give you an idea, um, you know... You know, from curved glass bakery cases to the pastry boxes, the refrigerators. Uh, yeah, I'm sure you have time on your hand. So just do a <laughs> Google search, YouTube search, Johnny Cupcakes. And I'm just at Johnny Cupcakes on social media and Johnny Earl on LinkedIn. Um, good luck, everybody. You can do this. Awesome. I was just going to ask, I was going to say, where can people find you online? <laughs> Oh yeah, Instagram. I yep. do all my own social media. My sister helps with Facebook, but yeah, Instagram at Johnny Cupcakes, uh, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, um, and then JohnnyCupcakes.com. You can learn the whole story. Um, hit us up if you need a speaker. Uh, hit me up if you need a, a speaker or if you need custom merchandise. Even if you want us to collaborate with you to drop ship special unique gifts for your uh, team or your clients who might be working from home just to um, let them know you're thinking of them. Um, we could help you come up with something fun. That's awesome. Well, thank you again uh, for joining us. Um, some really great ideas here. Um, I'm sure that the event planners and event professionals watching from home right now. Uh, I hope that it sparks some ideas for them. Um, as you know, uh, everyone at home, we record live uh, each Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern. Um, and these episodes are available the following Tuesday on all your favorite podcast apps. You can also watch live at event-icons.com or on our social channels. Um, please check us out. Um, again, my name is Alex Plaxon. Um, happy to be back and see all of you. Um, I am doing, uh, as most people know uh, who watch the show, um, I do a crisis communication certificate course with Meeting Professionals International. Um, the next one was not supposed to be till September. We have added a date due to high demand uh, on April 16th. Um, in the resources for this episode, we will include the link there. Um, I also have a $49 off coupon because we know that you are stretched uh, right now. So it's the first time we've ever offered a discount for this course. So um, I'm excited to be able to do that for you. Um, but please, if you have any questions, reach out to me at a Plaxon, Alex Plaxon on all social media. Um, Johnny, thanks again for joining us. Good, and, uh, thank you to our, our fans, our loyal, uh, fans who watch the show every week. Uh, thank you for joining us and we will see you next week on event icons. Thank you for joining us for another amazing episode of Hashtag Event Icons. To catch all the bonus content, resources mentioned, and an invite to our Facebook and LinkedIn groups, head to www.event-icons.com. Also, let us know what you thought about this week's episode. Share your biggest takeaway. Just tag your post with Hashtag Event Icons. We'd love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining us. We'll see you next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Eastern, right here on Hashtag Event Icons. Icons.